Nissan recently unveiled the Nissan LEAF E+, further broadening the appeal of the world's best-selling electric car by offering a new powertrain with additional power and range. The E Plus refers to the increased energy density of the model's 62 kWh battery pack and the higher output of its powertrain. The new powertrain adds to the car's range by approximately 40%, with an RCAN range of up to 363 km, ensuring that there's a Nissan Leaf to meet the driving needs of a wider range of customers. The Leaf E Plus will be sold as the Leaf Plus in Canada with each trim level receiving its own designation of S+, SV+, and SL+. Globally, the vehicle will be referred to as the Nissan LEAF E+. More than 380,000 Nissan LEAF vehicles have been sold globally since the 100% electric model first went on sale in 2010. In Canada, the Nissan LEAF saw a surge in sales, with 5,735 units sold in 2018, four times the previous record year recorded in 2016. The Nissan LEAF E Plus features a new version of the LEAF's revolutionary electric powertrain, delivering excellent energy efficiency and robust torque and power output. While the current LEAF meets the needs of many customers with its driving range of 243 km, the LEAF E Plus offers an NRCAN range of up to 363 km, allowing customers the ability to do more between charges. The high-capacity battery and more powerful, 160 kW motor in the LEAF E Plus combined to produce 45% more power and 250 pounds FT of torque, enabling faster acceleration when driving at high speeds. Accelerating from 50 mph to 75 mph is nearly 13% quicker. This allows the LEAF E Plus to confidently pass slower moving vehicles exit corners faster and more seamlessly, and merge easily with fast-moving traffic. The top speed has increased by approximately 10% for comfortable cruising. Thanks to the available new 70 kW quick charging system, the 2019 Nissan LEAF E Plus can charge more efficiently than ever. Based on early testing, Nissan LEAF E Plus owners can expect similar charging times when hooked up to a 100 kW charger as current LEAF owners do with a 50 kW charger, despite a 55% larger battery storage capacity. Consumers looking for a three-row family hauler have another choice now that Subaru has built the largest vehicle ever. The all-new Subaru Ascend family hauler arrived last year, but it's powered by a small 2.4-liter boxer engine. Does Ascend have enough power to haul your family up the mountain and over the pass to the ski areas? The all-new Ascend three-row family hauler comes powdered by a smaller 2.4-liter turbocharged boxer engine but it delivers the same power as the competition's larger, less fuel-efficient V6 power plants. Subaru engineers configured the Ascend 2.4-liter boxer engine to provide maximum torque at low RPM, providing brisk acceleration when merging onto a freeway or towing a trailer. Yet according to EPA estimates, Ascend can deliver up to 27 mpg while still producing 260 horsepower and 277 pounds FT of torque, using regular unleaded gasoline. Subaru was the first automaker to recognize the potential of using small turbocharged engines in mainstream vehicles like the first 1983 Gia Wagon. ProDrive, Subaru and Subaru Technica International, Subaru's motorsports partner, developed turbocharging in its performance Impreza and then Impreza WRX on the rally stages. They then went on to incorporate the technology into their daily drivers. Where Subaru really made its reputation, though, was combining turbocharging with their symmetrical all-wheel drive system. The Japanese automaker has perfected the combination of a small turbo boxer engine combined with all-wheel drive. 
This is what customers get in the new 2019 Ascent Family Hauler. When Torque News drove the new Ascent in Colorado's mountains for a week, this is what they found. Torque News said, We were surprised at the 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine's power in our high-altitude driving. Its 260 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, but the 277 pounds FT of Torque gets this large SUV moving. We pushed the three-row vehicle hard up by 70 heading west into the mountains and had no problem passing and making spirited maneuvers. The Ascent feels sure-footed and the all-wheel drive offers all-weather capability. Todd Hill says, the technologies of turbocharging and direct fuel injection work well together, allowing manufacturers to make a smaller engine for improved performance, better fuel economy or both. Subaru Carlin Planning Manager Subaru goes back to their past to produce the largest vehicle in their lineup. The small turbocharged 2.4-liter boxer engine produces enough grunt to haul your family up a mountain pass and won't leave you wanting for more power. Nissan has announced a few new members to the micro lineup, including the new range topping and sport grade, two new engines, and the option of the automatic Stronic CVT. Starting with the all-new 1.0-liter iGT100 engine, it replaces the outgoing 0.9-liter 90 picoseconds unit in the range, producing 97 horsepower and 118 pounds FT of torque. This makes the new engine 10 picoseconds and 10 newton meters more powerful than the old one, while Nissan also claims lower CO2 emissions and better fuel economy. As standard, the new Microlite GT100 will come with a 5-speed manual gearbox but Nissan will also offer the automatic Stronic CVT as an exclusive option for this engine. As for the new Micra N Sport, Nissan says it's the sportiest member of the range yet, featuring a revised chassis and also debuting a completely new engine. Under the bonnet you'll find a turbocharged 1.0-liter DIG T3 cylinder unit with 115 horsepower and 132 pounds FT of torque, linked to a performance-oriented six-speed manual transmission. According to Nissan, the 1.0-liter DIG T is not a retuned, more powerful version of the IGT engine but a completely different unit that's been developed in conjunction with Daimler alongside the 1.3-liter turbo 4 powertrains that recently debuted in the cash car. According to Nissan, the new 115-horsepower DIG T engine offers noticeably more acceleration when compared to the 97-horsepower IGT unit throughout the rev range. Peak torque is delivered from just 1,750 RPMs. The result is a 0 to 62 MPH in 9.9 seconds for the Micro with the Dig T engine, a full second quicker than the version with the 97 horsepower unit. Sport models will also feature a lower by 10 mm ride height, along with revised suspension tuning and a quicker steering rack to make the Micro more agile and fun to drive. The exterior of the new Micra N Sport features gloss black touches on the side mouldings and door mirror caps, a set of 17-inch alloy wheels, rear privacy glass and a new chrome-finished exhaust tip. Inside, you'll get Alcantara leather seats, keyless entry, black headliner, white air vents and more. Sales of the new Nissan Micra are expected to start in February, with the new N Sport going against models like the Ford Fiesta Street line, VW Polo line, Cita Biza FR line and more. Subaru was experiencing a major problem at its only factory in Japan. Production had been shut down since January 16 due to the recently discovered defect in the electric power steering unit. Until it was resolved, 
production ground to a halt for all of its models because they all used the same assembly line. A production stoppage on that scale is one of the worst things that could happen to any automaker, and for a smaller one like Subaru, it has potentially catastrophic financial consequences. Fortunately, the issue has been fixed. Subaru has just announced today that it has restarted production at its Yajima factory in Gunma Prefecture, Japan after a week and a half long stoppage. The automaker says that countermeasure parts for electric power steering units for Forester, Impreza, and Subaru XV models have now become available. All three of those vehicles are manufactured at Yajima. But the big question Subaru now needs to answer is how this production shutdown impacted finances. Bear in mind that Yajima accounts for nearly 60% of its entire global production. The only other Subaru factory in the world is located in Indiana, USA. Nomura securities analyst Masataka Kunuchimoto last week when the shutdown was announced said, based on the contribution margin per vehicle, we estimate that a complete shutdown of Japanese production lines for one week would dent operating profits by 13.5 billion yen. If those figures are correct, then Subaru may have potentially lost up to $183 million in operating profits during that time period. A separate Asian financial publication also estimated the shutdown didn't allow for the production of around 10,000 vehicles and even potential customer delivery delays. But Subaru had no choice but to stop production and find a fix as fast as possible. The power steering defect could cause the steering control unit light switch to turn on in the instrument panel, followed by a loss of power steering. With that no longer being an issue, it's time to examine and determine the financial fallout. <laughs>